Hello, hello, and hello. This is Zach Spicer, and I am coming to you today as the newest instructor here at Job Training and Safety in the state of Tennessee. We are going to be talking about slips, trips, and falls this month. So let's go ahead and dive right in, shall we? This presentation is going to cover several things, uh, one of them being the cost of slips, trips, and falls, some of the definitions related to such things, the causes of slips and trips, and some of the factors increasing the risk of those slips and trips. Things like work environment, human factors. Uh, note down there at the bottom, I pulled some of these numbers and uh, some of this data off of OSHA.gov and BLS.gov. Um, other places like that, just in case uh, you ladies and gentlemen out there would like to fact check me, because uh, I know y'all are just chomping at the bit for that. So the cost, what are some of the costs associated with this? Slips and trips can happen any part of our workplace, inside and out, whether you're climbing out of the car to come in the front door, or you're coming across the back gravel parking lot or in the pole yard. Uh, be careful of ditches, depressions, things like that. I like the second bullet point there. Falling is often a result of a slip or a trip. I would say that's probably the case, wouldn't it? Uh, slips and trips can also have serious outcomes, including disabling injuries or even death. So while I was researching this, I ended up finding a story on a fella who was uh, just simply four foot up on a little stepladder, changing out a light bulb, just four foot off the ground, ended up falling and it caused him to pass away. So uh, fatality can be something is four foot off the ground or shorter. Uh, I mean, if you look at, you know, putting your foot up on a chair and standing up on a table, which by the way, we shouldn't be doing that, correct? And we're not doing that out there because I know we're adhering to our OSHA uh, safety rules and all that good stuff. But something as short as, you know, 36, 48 inches off the ground can cause uh, permanent disability or, or an, uh, death. Uh, they, have they are affecting both, not only the, you as the employee, but it also has effects to the employer. Uh, things like pain, lost wages, uh, like we said, temporary or permanent disability, reduced quality of life and psychological effects. As far as the employer is concerned, well, I mean, I know every year we get at least a good, what, 10%, 10% at least uh, raise, right? <laughs> I know that that's what we're all hoping for. Uh, normally it's uh, one ten percent of 1% kind of thing. But some of the reasoning behind possibly not getting that big of a raise or something along those lines or not that new digger truck or not that new uh, coffee maker in the, in the back room back here, uh, things like insurance premiums that are increased because of the workplace accidents, uh, the costs associated with training your replacement, and the loss in productivity. So breaking it down by the numbers, uh, it might surprise you to learn that falls are the leading cause of death in the construction industry. Now I put a little caveat right there. I said construction industry which encompasses everybody from roofers to scaffolding, all that good stuff. That is just uh, not in the electrical world or the electrical industry. In 2020, we had a total of 371 deaths related to falls. Now, most, most of those are related to falls from a different height, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, also, emergency rooms are dominated by fall-related injuries. Uh, they account for over 6.8 million. Let me say that number again. 6.8 million injuries in the U.S. in 2020. Now, I put that big number in there to sort of just slap you in the face with it. Now, that number does take into account both at home and work, right? Because we need to pay attention at both places. They happen to anyone, anywhere. Consider the most common of causes wet surfaces. It can be as ordinary as mud and leaves in a rain puddle to an obscure spill like oil, grease, and food. Dry spills. They are deceivingly dangerous. Powders, dusts, plastic wrappings, lint, 
granules, all quickly accumulate, creating hazardous walking surfaces. Highly polished surfaces. Freshly waxed ceramic and marble floors may be attractive to look at, but are uncertain to walk on. Be especially attentive when moving between rooms, from, let's say, carpeting to tile. The distinctly different floor textures can catch you off guard. Anything loose. Heads up for unstable floorboards and tiles, slick rugs and mats. These obstacles go largely unnoticed. Gravel walkways. Dirt, sand and pebbles cleverly camouflage a smooth surface, making it tricky to maneuver. Debris and litter on walkways do the same thing. Sudden slopes. They can appear with no warning, bringing you down in a flash. Unmarked ramps. Gang planks and loading docks often don't have skid-resistant surfaces, and those made of metal are particularly treacherous when wet. The smooth surface easily becomes slick as ice. Weather conditions. Rain, ice, snow, sleet. Inclement weather can be a force to be reckoned with. Special caution should be taken when working in these conditions. Constant climbing. Up and down, mounting and dismounting, scaling and descending. A missed hand grip here or a slippery rung there is a split second away from an accident. Common sense says, watch your step or you'll trip. But reality replies, sorry, too busy, too rushed. Remember Renee's trip? Her coworkers irresponsibly left out their tools, costing her dearly. Trailing cables and hoses, pallets and steel girders, loose wires and cords, open cabinets and desk drawers, the list is endless. All sorts of industrial supplies, tools or machinery left unattended on walkways wreak havoc. Uneven flooring, deep cracks, gaping holes, curb drops, changes in floor elevation can all spearhead major trips and falls. Stairs, an obvious architectural necessity, all too often present a navigating nightmare. Neck and back trauma, the most common complaints after stairway falls, are the culprit or cause to many preventable disabling injuries. Yes, taking two or three steps at a time could be deadly. Clutter, a virtual breeding ground for catastrophes. Warehouse exits blocked by boxes. Workshop containers of chemical and waste materials unevenly stacked. Construction scaffolding piled high with building materials. All these scenarios make the workplace a hazardous haven for missteps and trips. Jay anxiously surveys the warehouse. Storage issues and delivery delays put Jay far behind his inventory schedule. With clipboard in hand, he hastily weaves his way through the shipments and pallets. Sorry to say, while Jay is schedule-minded, he's safety-blinded. His pathway is peppered with debris, then the inevitable trip. It's not uncommon to trip on loose materials, then fall head-on into other objects like shelving or debris. So as we saw in the video there, uh, that's pretty much what we're covering throughout this whole thing. That's summarized in about four minutes there. We're going to go just a little bit more in depth on several of these things. Uh, this slide we're talking about the APPA 16th edition. Uh, I know all of y'all out there are just chomping at the bits, can't wait for the 17th edition to come out. Well, I have been told by my mentor, the, uh, be safe to say, the greatest JTNS instructor we have ever had. Uh, my man that has taken me under his wing, Mr. Bill Eskew, he has informed me that we won't have to wait much longer. It'll be around January. We'll have the 17th edition coming out, and y'all can sign for it and start reading right after the first of the year, right? So, uh, housekeeping. Now, I have read uh, the 15th and looked through the 16th here, and it's pretty much word for word the same thing. Essentially, what we're going to be talking about is work locations inside and out. Uh, of vehicles need to be kept clean and orderly and sanitary at all times. That means throw those old dip spit bottles away. Uh, if you got any of them old Hardee's biscuits wrappers, go ahead and trash those, right? Uh, now, subsection D 
It's talked about permanent floors or platforms. It says shell. Just know this, anytime we see that word shell, that means that it has to be done, no ifs, ands, buts about it, period, point blank, right? So permanent floors and platforms shall be kept free of dangerous projections or obstructions, uh, maintained reasonably free from oil, grease, and water. Now it says if you have an operation or somewhere where you're working where you can have slippery conditions, hopefully you're using mats or grates or cleats or something to alleviate that hazard. Continuing on with the 16th edition, uh, subsection E, you're talking about stairs and stairwells, uh, aisles, permanent roadways, uh, any places that uh, you're going to be walking through, they shall be kept reasonably clear uh, of obstructions, depressions, and debris. Materials and supplies shall be stored in an orderly manner. So if you're out in the warehouse, don't be throwing in pallets around, you know, tear open in boxes, uh, two, four sleeves, and throw the boxes down or the wrappers down that makes a slick surface. And uh, subsection H right there, paper and other combustible materials shall not be allowed to accumulate. Uh, it's just like the reason why we spray in substations. Uh, if you have gravel substations, something along them lines, we don't let it get growed up in there. Uh, not only is it a fire hazard, it can be a trip hazard, uh, along with keeping the vegetation out to keep the critters out, right? Some of the injuries associated with slips, trips, and falls. Uh, types of injuries are sprains and strains and bruises and contusions. Uh, I said fractions. I always say fractions when I see fractures for some reason, but I would be safe to say that some of you out there are scared of fractions just as bad as you are breaking your arm. Uh, abrases, cuts, and the body parts that can be affected. I like that right there. Knee, ankle, foot, wrist, back, shoulder. Pretty much, how about this? Top of your head down to the bottom of your toes. Uh, anything can and will be hurt if you fall, especially if you try to catch yourself. Uh, like the majority of the falls uh, that we see out there and the injuries associated with them or when you're putting your arms out and trying to catch yourself, you have a lot of risk, uh, wrist sprains, strains, and breaks, and forearm breaks. This right here is a uh, what we call a fatal fax. Uh, in the OSHA world, or um, what they're calling here at the NIOSH fatili fat Fatality Assessment and Control Evaluation. Uh, real quick, I'm going to summarize this. And the reason why this slide is in here is because uh, it essentially takes something as innocuous or small or, you know, nothing major like a little slip, and it can have major repercussions. So a 34-year-old male uh, apprentice lineman uh, was electrocuted while assisting setting the wooden pole. Essentially, they had laid the wire out, uh, setting the pole up in there. And I hope, I really hope all you fellas out there and ladies out there setting poles, that if you're working anything around energized lines, you're using your rubber gloves, you're keeping it at least a hand, uh, you know, arm's distance length from you. You're not getting your body against it. Uh, I put a couple different pictures in here. Uh, the first picture there, you can see one fellow on the back side of the pole, and he's essentially bear hugging it. That right there is just, that's, that's the wrong way to do it. Uh, but to get back on topic, uh, the fellow was trying to help guide the pole into the hole. The ground was wet, slippery. So while he was pushing it over there, he ended up slipping, making contact with the pole with his body, which in turn hit the phase up there. It ended up coming down the pole went, entered his chest, I believe, and exited uh, to the ground through his right elbow. They ended up doing CPR. Uh, he ended up passing away uh, because of that, uh, something as small as a trip or a slip, right? Uh, so we got to be doing all the right things in the right way because if one little hiccup happens, you possibly want to have every other thing that you have done right to still save your behind. Here's some definitions real quick of slips, trips, and falls. So uh, when there is too little friction or traction between your feet uh, or footwear and the walking surface, I can tell you this, uh, friction, right? You would think that friction itself, uh, itself would help out, but you can actually have too much friction. 
uh, sort of like a sticky surface on the ground or something like that. If you've ever been walking and something all of a sudden catches your foot, slows you down, uh, messes your pace up. Uh, so be careful of that. Also, trips. So when you are too far, uh, when your center of balance is too far off, uh, maybe you're toting something heavy, uh, maybe your top end gets a little further than your bottom end kind of issue. And then down below we have the two kinds of, or we have falls. Uh, when your feet or your lower legs hit an object and your upper body continues, but your lower body doesn't. Uh, and then when you have that misstep, we've all had that misstep, right? To where you think you're on that very last step and next thing you know, you continue to go down another good six, eight inches. We had a fella share a story at one of the other utilities that uh, myself and Bill had visited the other day and he was on that very last step. That very last step, that's what he thought. He was on that very last step and ended up coming down uh, and said he broke his foot and ankle in three spots. So something as simple as that right there, make sure you look down and pay attention. Two types of falls. Falls at the same level. Uh, that's pretty much where you're working on flat level ground kind of thing. And you hit the ground at the same elevation that uh, your feet were at. Now, earlier when we said that the fatalities in our construction industry are dominated by falls, here's what falls are sort of talking about. Most of the time, roofers, places like that, iron workers, they fall from a higher level to a lower level. So that one right there is what ends up really killing people and injuring people the majority of the time. A couple more causes here. So we have wet and dry contamination, sort of like we saw in that video. Anything wet as far as mud, grease, water, oil, uh, any kind of stuff like that can make it wet. Make sure you put out your little caution wet floor signs. And then dry contamination, most of the time, people don't consider dry as far as being slick, right? Uh, I can tell you right now, just driving in this time of year, the leaves get on the road any uh, motorcycle guys especially motorcycle guys uh, when people are mowing their yards and blow that those grass clippings out into the road uh, that dry contamination right there can end up making the road slick just like wet leaves can make the road slick for everybody uh, things like sawdust all that especially on concrete floors a couple more causes here Highly polished floors such as marble, terrazzo, or ceramic tile can be extremely slippery even when dry. Uh, uh, freshly waxed floors, I can tell you coming out of the Marine Corps, I have done my fair share of that. Uh, also transitioning from one floor to the other, i.e. going from your hardwood floor to your carpet or something like that, there's a different uh, friction cohesive which means that now your foot might slide a little further. Next step, it's gonna slide a little less, meaning you've got to account for that and you've got to adjust. Couple pictures here shows other causes. Uh, slope walked, sur sloped walking surfaces, driveways, hillsides. Uh, I would say that's a pretty good billy goat trail on the right-hand side pulling them wires, right? Even when you're pulling new wire into new construction, uh, sloped driveways or walkways, uh, loose unanchored rugs, mats. What about those old blankets that we have as floor mats, right? I don't know if y'all do that where y'all come from, but we use them uh, where I had worked previously. Also, you gotta be concerned with your shoes. Make sure they're not muddy, greasy, or oily. Hopefully you've got uh, decent tread on the bottom there just like the tires on your vehicle, right? If, you, if your tread's wearing thin, you probably need to get a replacement. Ramps, gang plates, uh, anything without skid or slip resistant surfaces. Hopefully that when you're climbing up in the bed of that bucket or that digger and climbing on the bend door to, to uh, get up there in the seat or get up there in the bucket, you've got tread resistant or um, tread or anti-slip resistant tread which means it possibly has some of that rhino liner kind of stuff, right? Or it's got diamond plates, something like that. Just know that metal surfaces can be extremely, extremely slippery. A couple more causes here. We do this all the time coming out in the construction side of this place, right? Mounting, dismounting trucks, crawling up and in and out, uh, out of that bucket, up and down on that platform of that digger. 
make sure you're using three points of contact. If you dig that ladder off to go put a service up on the side of the house, make sure you set it up the appropriate way, the four to one, right? And make sure you use three points of contact. Uh, anytime you're crawling up on that trailer, uh, that pole trailer or anything like that, the truck bed to dig out them cross arms, uh, make sure you have sure footing. Don't put it on that half a roll of number two ACSR and end up cutting out from underneath you. Couple other causes right here. We got irregular surfaces such as gravel. Uh, big, we've all walked across gravel driveways and parking lots and whole nine yards. You get a real big rock just for some strange reason right out in the middle of it. And of all the places your foot has to land, you put it on top of her. Next thing you know, you done twisted your ankle and half fell in front of everybody. And what you do first is you hop up and you look around and you make sure nobody saw you, right? That's exactly what we do. Uh, be careful. Like we said a little bit earlier with the sloped hillsides and driveways. Well, we've already got a hazard right there because of the slope, but now let's add something to it like, oh, I don't know, say ice and snow, right? Because we work in just the most beautiful weather. We never go to work in the rain, sleet, snow, ice, or anything. Uh, like we said just a little while ago with pine, need, uh, pine needles and leaves, uh, that can be extremely wet and slippery. So some of the causes of trips and missteps. Uh, here are some of the common causes of uh, uh, trips. They include things like uncovered cables or wires, uh, extension cords running across your hallways, pathways. Uh, maybe you've pulled that hydraulic tamp off the back of the digger truck and you're using it or that hydraulic uh, ground rod driver. Be careful of them hoses laying out on the ground or that uh, pole mat that you've got laid out there. Uh, Cluttered or obstacles in the aisleways or walkways. So that's not where you're supposed to stack stuff. Where people walk, make sure that that stuff is out of the way. And open cabinet or filing or desk drawers, anything like that. Uh, in an emergency situation, take note of that bottom bullet right there. In an emergency situation, you do not want obstructions blocking your exits. A, if you've got to get out of somewhere in a hurry, you want to make sure that you're not have to worry about where your feet have to go, oh man, I gotta step over this and step by that. You wanna be able to get from A to B quick, fast, in a hurry. B, here's the other part of it. What if you can't get out, right? What if you're still stuck inside there? Now you've got fire, rescue, police, somebody like that having to come inside and get you. So now they not only are figuring out where these rooms are and where this hallway goes, but they're having to deal with all these obstructions. So there's a couple good reasons right there to keep it clean, right? So I'll just throw this out there. I am full of useless information. My wife informs me of that all the time. One thing that I do like is medical knowledge. I like medical stuff. And when I was researching this right here, there was something that come across my mind as far as you know the old adage of you can't uh, walk and chew bubble gum at the same time? Well, who out there, when you walk from you know point A to point B, do you physically look down and look at your feet the entire time? No, most of the time you're talking to your buddy, you're on your phone, you're TikToking or whatever. You're not really looking down at your feet. Well, your brain does this real cool thing. It's called proprioception. Now, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong just because of my accent, but proprioception means that you physically don't have to look down where your foot is going to go. It's like how you can take a bite of food and you know where the end of the fork is going to be. That's how our brain works. So when you're walking, the first couple of steps, your brain goes, okay, this is flat, this is smooth, we're good to go. And it sort of fills in the rest of the time you're walking, almost like when you're driving down the road, next thing you know, you're like, hey, it's 20 minutes later and I am here and I don't even remember the ride most of the time. That's how your brain works. It fills in the useless information that it thinks uh, that it doesn't need, right? That is a great thing because we can multitask and do different things. But on the other side of that coin, here's the bad part. Look at that first picture right there. If you were just naturally walking down through there, talking on the phone, talking to your buddy, you might completely miss the fact that there are painted yellow strips right there indicating there's a change in elevation. If you didn't see those, we would do that misstep like we had talked about a little bit earlier, right? You would end up 
foot coming out, going down, and then you think you're supposed to be at that right height. Next thing you know, down you go. Uh, sprain, strain, rolled ankle kind of issue. Uh, also, other things we got to worry about are carpets and mats and irregularities and walking surfaces. One of the big, big issues uh, is stairs and stairways. So pay attention. Down there at the very bottom, it says one million people per year are treating emergency room, rooms related to uh, falls from stairs and stairwells. So be very careful. Notice that one right there. We're missing a mid rail on that thing. Also, be wary if it's a, a, a non-slip resistant surface, even like your decking boards and stuff like that. When they get wet, they get super duper slippery. Uh, but just look for damaged steps, anything taller, shorter, uh, or otherwise irregular. Hitting a little bit more on this, like we covered just a little bit sooner, uh, or a little bit earlier. Uh, anything like debris, accumulated waste, uh, there we go again with the cables and the pallets and the tools and the walkways, anything sticking out to the walkways. Like we said a couple slides before with the sidewalk and the curb drops, look for uh, uneven sidewalks or where it hits the parking lot. And a good transition right into parking lots, right? Even getting from your vehicle to the front door or to the warehouse has its own set of hazards, i.e. look at the unmarked elevation changes, right? Your curbs, your speed bumps. I know we would take and throw down uh, old cross arms. That'd be our backing spots, right? So that's where we would run up to and uh, stop and back at. Other risks that might also uh, increase your slips and falls, uh, conditions or situations that make it difficult to see potential hazards. Uh, if you look at that center picture right there, it's hard to see that fellow back there. I was standing in front of you, I'd probably ask a quick question like, hey, do we see a problem here? And I know that you smart, astute guys that aren't asleep by now would say, hey, you probably needs a little bit of lighting right there. Flip a light switch on, hopefully get your flashlight out. Uh, other things like shadows, maybe even bulk, uh, bulky or awkward PPE. Uh, you don't have to have a face mask or a respirator on. We've all been through the COVID thing. Even having a face mask and prescription glasses or uh, your safety glasses on out there, we're fogging them up, which can cause vision impairments. Some of the physical conditions that can affect uh, or increase the risk of slips and trips, uh, things like our eyesight, right? If you wear prescription glasses or contacts, make sure you wear them, put them on. Uh, also age, like I said earlier about my mentor and the greatest JTNS instructor that we've got here, Mr. Bill Eskew, Esquire. Uh, with age, you know, comes beauty, right? So uh, Mr. Bill there, I'm not saying not a spring chicken or nothing, but with age, things happen like your uh, reaction time tends to slow down, your eyesight tends to degrade, your hearing degrades, and when you talk about hearing, then you get into inner ears, and when you talk about inner ears, then you're talking about things like your balance and stuff like that can be affected also. Uh, fatigue, I know we work long hours, uh, even uh, the men and women coming in upstairs or in the front, helping dispatch, helping take control of all those customers out of lights. They come in late nights, early mornings. Uh, that's one of the key things right there, making sure that you know where you're going, you're not in a hurry. Uh, stress, illness, uh, medication, drugs, or alcohol. We've all seen the stumbling drunk fella, right? Uh, human behaviors. So behaviors are actions that you choose and control that can contribute to slip strips and falls if you practice careless work habits. Uh, we had said this a little bit earlier, and I'll throw this out there. If you have something too heavy, don't tote it. Don't pick it up. Ask for help. Don't be too prideful, pig-headed. Ask for help. Use a dolly. Use a piece of equipment. Use a tow motor. You have one back. One. That's it. That's all you get. And you want to take care of it. I promise you, you want to take care of it. So, ask for help if you have something too big. Also, not only does it avoid a back injury, but if it's something too big and obscures your view, guess what? Now you might be thrown off balance. Next thing you know, you're face first in the parking lot or in the in the hallway, right? Uh, 
Uh, also, it prevents you from holding on the handrails and things like that. Continuing on with our human factors, we got inattentive walking. Everybody, everybody is looking down, looking on that cell phone. They're Facebooking and MySpacing and TikToking and IGing and Instagramming and pull your phone out of your face or face out of your phone. Pay attention where you're going. Taking shortcuts. If it says don't walk on the grass, it's not because uh, that fella doesn't want you to walk on his prize-winning hydrangeas. It might be because there's no cistern or, or depression over there. If it says walk on a sidewalk, there's probably a good reason to do such. Also, being in a hurry, everybody's in a hurry nowadays. Slow down a little bit, take your time, plan your route out. A couple more human factors, uh, things like poor housekeeping, like we discussed a little bit earlier. Make sure you keep your place, uh, your workplace, whether it be your truck, your bucket, your digger, your desk, try to keep it free of clutter. Also, don't use improper cleaning methods or materials, putting the wrong kind of wax or polish down. Uh, don't try to clean up grease with water. And uh, make sure you're using signs if you spill that uh, mocha, froy, latte, soy, double pump uh, Starbucks drink that you decided to buy this morning, but somebody bumped you on the elbow. If you spilled your coffee, make sure you put your wet floor sign down. A couple more factors here, footwear. Taps on heels, because that's what we wear nowadays, right? Everybody sounds like they're coming, a herd of, herd of cattle coming down the road. Or things like slick smooth surfaced soles that was very hard for me to do i'm not gonna lie and things like high heels fellas fellas listen to me don't wear your high heels to work i'm telling you they're not er or eh rated yet they don't have composite toes yet so leave them at home wait to the weekend <laughs> make sure that you avoid wearing footwear that's not suitable for your work environment and last but not least, safety is everybody's business. However, uh, it's mandated that employers have responsibility to provide a safe work environment for all their employees, but you, as an employee, should strive to improve your own safety. Uh, so when I say that, things like reducing the risk of slipping on wet floors, well, guess what? If you ain't got to walk on a wet floor, don't walk on it. Pretty obvious. Reduce the risk right off the bat, right? But if you do, take your time. Pay attention. Uh, where you're going, adjust your stride and pace. Uh, walking with your feet pointed out just a little bit, making wide turns. Also, some of the risk can be reduced uh, from uh, things like tripping. Always use installed light sources. Flip that light switch on. Uh, light switch on. Uh, if you don't have a light switch, guess what? Grab that flashlight. Grab that headlamp. Uh, use it when you're going into dark rooms. Also, ensuring that if you're toting anything or pushing anything. Make sure that it's not in your way so you can't see where you're going. It's not only you're going to trip over something or possibly step in a puddle of hydraulic fluid or something along them lines and end up busting your behind. So that right there concludes our JTNS uh, slips, trips, and falls for the month of November. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions, comments, and or suggestions. I greatly appreciate your time today. Uh, this has been Zach Spicer, uh, the newest uh, JTNS member. Uh, look forward to meeting y'all out there, working with y'all. And like I said, give me a little time. I'll get under. I'll get this uh, safety thing under my feet. I come out of the line world and substation world, so I'm still new to this. But I greatly appreciate your time today, and hope y'all stay safe out there. <laughs>